I ran out of space and um, I have to ever so quickly get home with this and um, try and um, complete it as quickly as possible. Um, so I was saying that, um, you know, once um, once glucose enters, you know, the B cell of the of the islet of longer hands in the pancreas, it it then immediately undergoes glycoly glycolysis, uh, and this is. Um, you know, this is uh, initiated by glucokinase, enzyme glucokinase, and then we we'll have glucose 6 phosphate, which then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this increases ATP. Oh my black, I forgot, I think it's not working as well as I would like it to. Um, and then pyruvate then, you know, enters the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria. So then pyruvate goes into, this is the mitochondria. And obviously we know that this then results in again increase in ATP as well as the release of water and carbon dioxide. Uh, the important thing really here is that uh, I'll just use green. Let me use a bit of green for writing. The important thing really is that <coughs> Entry and, and metabolism of that glucose, you know, that number one, you know, glucose uh, enters B cell and undergoes glycolysis, like the breakdown of glucose. So, you know, that glycolysis and indeed the citric acid pathway results in increase in ATP intracellularly. So the increase in ATP means that we have a lot of ATP as well as uh, more ATP versus ATP as well as more ANDH NAD. Uh, obviously, this, you know, is linked to this pathway, which is a much longer pathway. I've just, you know, summarized it into this because of, uh, I don't think I'll have enough space to go into this hell. And as well, really, it's quite an intricate pathway. So, um, what ATP does, when there is a lot of ATP, it causes the uh, potassium channel to close. I don't know why I've gone for blue because really it's, it's one of the colors that I'm running out of. Uh, I don't know, purple perhaps. It causes so the, 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 there is more potassium in the cell so when there is a lot of ATP, ATP binds and closes potassium channel. So potassium channel is a tetramer that's made of um, two, you know, of four subunits, two subunits of KIR, I think it's 6.2, and two subunits of SUR. The importance of SUR is that it's bound by anti-diabetic drugs, uh, which are called self, self, sulfonylureases like the clips and really when they bind the you know the when they bind this channel again they cause it to close and close of the potassium channel results in depolarization 
of the cell membrane because obviously potassium is um, a positive ion so when when it cannot leave the cell when it cannot free you know freely flow in and out of the cell or leave the cell really more of it remains in the cell and the cell becomes much more positively charged and then depolarization occurs so so number three increase in atp uh equals closure of um potassium so this is a potassium atp atp dependent channel and that results in depolarization depolarization of the cell membrane so as the cell depolarizes um it it leads to so depolarization results in the opening so while these are, are being glios the, the next ones are opening of voltage gated calcium channels calcium ion channels so then the voltage gated calcium uh, I'll draw them here so then these ones uh, do not cohesive I'll just use red so the voltage gated calcium channel will open and calcium leaves outside the cell so then it influxes so then equals to calcium influx and when calcium enters the cell it um i really should have found another black pan so calcium goes into the ER. So ER stores calcium. And then, you know, it then causes the opening of these calcium channels. And this releases free so this influx of calcium results in in um, the opening or shall I just say the release of calcium from ER in a calcium dependent so results in release of free calcium from the from the ER and this occurs in a calcium dependent calcium in a, in a calcium dependent calcium release calcium dependent calcium increase so then increase in ca intracellular calcium causes the cell so number six so increase in calcium alters alters the cell state and this altered in cell state causes exocytosis of those secretory secretory vesicles containing insulin plus a C peptide insulin with zinc obviously this is mature insulin plus a pro insulin so then um no so this goes so this will be our cell there so the basic is well I like this mm -hmm. 
my daughter, this is too big. <laughs> Just to create some space, really, and they contain inside them, you know, all the components that I I, I said: insulin, C peptide, and uh, and then and a little bit of insulin. So then, the the, the secretory granules come, you know. This. So they just fuse with the mem with the membrane. So this will be a secretory granule. It fuses with the membrane, and then it expels its components. The ma the main one, which we are talking about, obviously, is insulin, into portal blood, portal circulation. So really. Again, what I want to stress is that if you were to depolarize the cell via the anti-diabetic um, drug, again, you will, you know, cause increased intracellular calcium and exocytosis of uh, these granules expelling insulin into the portal circulation. Another way... To achieve all of this, you know, for insulin release is via the beta adrogenic receptor, which is a G protein coupled receptor. And this can occur um, so again this is similar but you know it's just a different way as in um, as in uh, binding of the of the you know this is a G protein coupled receptor when 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 it's bound it can there are two ways really um it can um cause I think I'll start with this one it can okay So the cell has a component that is called a PIP2. So when a G protein, so when a G protein coupled receptor is bound, it causes the activation of a phosphor, phospholipase C. And phospholipase C hydrolyzes this membrane bound protein which is called PIP into IP3 which is released into the cytosol and DAG which remains bound onto the cell there so when IP3 is released into the cytosol, it acts by binding onto its receptor, which is found on the ER. So when it binds its receptor on the ER, so it binds its receptor, which is a calcium channel on the ER specifically. On ER and it opens it to again you know cause the increase of free calcium and um, you know then DAG then um, activates PKC or the PKA Anyway, this is a protein kinase. An activation of protein kinase results in phosphorylation. Phosphorylation of a number of proteins, which again alters this the cell state. Okay, shall, shall we say shall we write this here? Yeah, like altered. 
self state. So again, then this alt has the cell state and the alt has cell state causes exocytosis. Like secretory granules. Because we must remember that these secretory granules are actually storage of uh, insulin storage. So that's another one other way of releasing um, um, insulin via the G protein coupled receptor. The other G protein coupled receptor mechanism will involve um, you know the you know the G protein coupled receptor is a seven transmembrane receptor that has you know spans the membrane seven times. I probably have done one, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, so gosh, that's excitement that right there. And there's a G alpha subunit there intracellularly. So when it's bound, this G alpha subunit um, is um, breaks down a you know a GT a, a G a G T P, and then it activates adenylase adenylyl cyclase cy and when adenylene cyclase becomes activated, so we're here because I, I have this as well. So I, I left my finger there so that I could remember, I, I could just come here. So we're here. So this GS subunit has left, it's an alpha one. So then it, it activates, it, it you know, it hydrolyzes, uh, you know, it, 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 it GTP, it, it dissociates, so it, it dissociates from this entire receptor there, it's sort of like move towards like this, like here really. And then it hydrolyzes, it, it activates um, um, adenine cyclase. And so adenine cyclase um, hydrolyzes, like cycle uses, uh, oh no, no, no. Again, then we have PKA activation. And then once PKA acti is activated, it then phosphorylates the L-type calcium channel. So it then phosphorylates uh, the calcium channel there, releases um, calcium to be released. I say it's sarcoplasmic reticulum because I was working on cardiology when I did this and increased force of contraction. However, this is, you know, it causes a release of, um, so, so phosphorylation of, again, of calcium channel leading to, you know, increase in calcium channel which alters the cellular state and then results in this. So really, there are three mechanisms by, or, you know, or even four, if we include the, you know, the anti-diabetic um, drugs. So by which insulin can be exocytosed and released into the portal circulation. So we can use the immediate, you know, the bind, the entry of glucose into the cell via the GLUT2 transporter, which is facilitated by diffusion. Or, or, you know, the binding of the SUR, two SUR subunits of this tetrama, so this is times two as well, of this tetrama, the potassium channel, which leads to depolarization of the cell. So glycolysis increases ATPA. ATPA causes closure of the calcium channel. The closure of the calcium channel, because this is... Uh, K um, channel, but it's ATP dependent. So it, it then is closed by ATPA. So closure causes depolarization. Binding of SUR causes depolarization. Depolarization causes calcium influx 
you know this opens it opens so depolarization opens calcium channels which are voltage gated hence being opened by depolarization so opening of voltage gated in equals to calcium influx Calcium influx causes the release of free calcium from the ER and then increase in intracellular calcium causes exocytosis of insulin um, through the changing of the cell states. Again, binding of the G protein coupled receptor protein activates phospholipase C, activation of phospholipase C hydrolyzes, uh, PIP, PIP is hydrolyzed into IP3 and dark, ITP3 binds onto um, the receptor there, you know, it's, it's similar to that phosphorylase, but binds and opens uh, calcium channels, again, by phosphorylation, uh, IP3, yes, binds uh, calcium channels, opens them to increase uh, calcium channel again, dark, uh, phosphorylates proteins again, in leading to uh, altered cell states dependent on calcium as well because all of this is based on this calcium there on these channels being opened again cyclic adenylase cyclase similarly you know undergoes the for a little protein kinase activation so protein, these are protein kinase Protein kinase always phosphorylate, so that's how we and phosphorylase remove the phosphorylation. So it's, it's the opposite way. Um, so insulin, once insulin and enters the portal circulation, it immediately is transported to the liver. And when it reaches the liver, um, most of it is reduced, is removed from the circulation. Um, and used by the hepatocytes to synthesize um, um, oh gosh storage glucose storage is glycogen to also synthesize fat storages triglycerides it also synthesizes VLDL you know very low uh, density lipids it also synthesizes a lot of other proteins as well so insulin also is used by muscle as well to obviously make protein and also as well make storage as well in storage of all the things which i've mentioned in terms of the hepatocytes it's also used by uh, fat cells adipose tissue again for storage of you know glucose um so the insulin binds is, binds the is receptor i think it's a tyrosine kinase so the minute that i say kinase obviously you know it actually leads its activities lead to a phosphorylation of you know um of uh, other proteins within that uh pathway um so i think in the next session i'll just look at what insulin does in different parts and then finally discuss diabetes, how it develops, um, and its management. So really, I think before one talks about diabetes, it was actually important for one to just ever so quickly discuss the synthesis of um, insulin and its secretion. And um, obviously, just to go back again, you know, insulin is synthesized from... Just a quick summary, insulin is a peptide hormone that is synthesized from, you know, that is um, encoded in the short arm of chromosome 11. It's synthesized in different bands. So there are four bands, four bands. There is a signal sequence, signal sequence, then band B, band C, and then band A. This is quite important because, you know, once it has been, um, 
once it binds, the, you know, once the MRA is made, so the MRA messenger RNA is made, it looks something like this. I'm just going to write the letters. So this will be the signal, this will be the B, this will be the C, and this will be the A. Obviously the A is the smallest. So this is 24 amino acids long, this is 30 amino acids long, this is um, 31, this is 21 amino acids long. And really this SBCA is how it, it will fold, is how, it's how it will be translated and how it folds. So when it comes into translation, it's translated in the ER, the ribosome will translate the signal sequence first. So the SS is translated first. And then when it's translated, a signal recognition pattern binds that signaling sequence and delivers the ribosome with this messenger RNA. And this little bit of the protein that has been synthesized, it delivers this into the ER. And on the ER, there are docking sites for the ribosome and the, you know, in the, in the complex, shall we just say, in the complex of the signal peptide and the, and the signal recognition protein. So then it binds and docks onto that. If, if there is a, a free docking protein, it docks onto the, if there is none, the, the translation arrests and remains arrested until there is a free docking protein. So this, yeah, you know, that binding of the signaling, signal recognition protein is a regulatory mechanism for insulin uh, synthesis and secretion. So once there is a free docking protein on the ER, on the, ER the entire thing is brought, the, it will then dock, and then, <laughs> I'm going to use one color, it's, it's odd. The ribosome with the bound complex then docks and the signal peptide attaches onto the membrane like that. And then the, the peptides will be translated. Obviously, this is the 5C, 5-3. So then, um, you know, so then everything will be... Um, will be, you know, will emerge. So this will be the protein B, this will be C, and this will be A. B and A have uh, disulfate bonds there, which bind them together. A also has another disulfate bond there. So there are one, two, three disulfate bonds on an insulin uh, molecule. So when the insulin, this is called pre-pro-insulin. And once the signal sequence is cleaved, it remains bound to the membrane. What then emerges is pro-insulin. And pro-insulin has three peptides. The C peptide, the B peptide, and the A peptide. And um, when it becomes packaged into vesicles, a, an enzyme will give or will give there and there to result in a mature insulin. So once the once cleavage occurs, we'll then have a mature insulin which is made of A peptide and B peptide, and it obviously is then 51 amino acids long, and the C peptide on its own. So the C peptide is therefore then used for to you know to detect insulin synthesis and secretion insulin and c peptide are secreted at a one-to-one -one ratio um so obviously what although i've written insulin the other thing would be c peptide and a tiny amount of pro-insulin that hasn't been cleared so really this, I think this is what all I wanted to, you know, to just ever so quickly summarize on. So then in the second section, I've just briefly looked at what insulin is being a, poly, being a, 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 a hormone. 
um, that is made of uh, two proteins, protein peptide A and peptide B. Peptide A is only 21 amino acids long, peptide B is 30 amino acids long. It's secreted, it, it's synthesized in the beta cells of the pancreas within the islet of, islet of longer hands. And obviously the islet has four types of cells. The, al the alpha cells which secrete glucagon, the beta cells which secrete insulin, and you know, other things. Um, I'm saying secrete amine make, and the delta cells which make somatostatin, the F cells which make the pancreatic polypeptide, and all the cells of the islet of Langer Hans communicate and regulate uh, themselves via that communication and via the blood flow. The blood flow of froze from the central aspects where uh, the beta cells are mainly concentrated, where there's a majority of them. Which means that once insulin has been secreted into the blood, as blood flows from the peripheral, I think I emphasized this when I was discussing, uh, you know, the 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 uh, flow of blood in the liver sinusoid, or in the hepatocytes, really. But with the with the with the islet, it's different in that blood flow flows from the central aspect to the peripheral and the beta cells are more concentrated in the central aspect, followed by the alpha, the delta, and then the F are more in the peripheral. So as blood, if blood is already carrying insulin from the central to the peripheral, it then um, inhibits the secretion of all the other um, hormones from the other cells. Um, and however, since I was focusing on insulin, really, insulin can be... Um, secreted based on the binding of glucose undergoing uh, glycolysis via glucokinase in leading to increase in ATP, increase in ATP causing the closure of the potassium channel, closure of potassium channel causing depolarization of the cell which results in the opening of voltage, voltage gated um, calcium channel increasing intracellular calcium leading to release of calcium from calcium storage in the ER, then causes exocytosis, or indeed for the phosphorylation, or indeed for the IP3, um, which binds onto the calcium channels on the ER. So in the next section, I will be looking at um, diabetes. I'll first of all probably just ever so quickly look at what insulin does once it binds its tyrosine kinase receptor on its target organs.